Welcome to NTM Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top story is St. Lucia records two new cases of COVID-19. The public is urged to adhere to infection prevention measures. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney lobbies the World Bank for better access to finance for small states. And the Ministry of Equity and Social Justice joins forces for the comfort of an elderly Denry resident. St. Lucia has recorded two new cases of COVID-19 in as many days. Wednesday, October 21, 2020, case 38 was confirmed. The individual is a 53-year-old female from Groselay. On Tuesday evening, 20th October, case 37 was confirmed. The individual is a 43-year-old male from Groselay. During the contact tracing process, he was identified as linked to cases 33 and 34 and was placed in quarantine. He is now isolated for care at the respiratory hospital. The latest case, the 53-year-old female of Groselay, was also identified during the contact tracing process as linked to cases 33, 34 and 37. She has been in quarantine and is now isolated for care at the respiratory hospital. Dr. Sharon Belmar george is the chief medical officer. The new cases for this week have all been identified for the contact tracing process and that tracing process continues this week. All efforts are being made by the public health team to rapidly respond to contain further spread of cases. We anticipate new cases as we continue the process to identify, test and isolate further contacts. As we proceed with the necessary public health interventions, a serious appeal is made to the public to cooperate with our health officers and to practice daily the behaviors which can protect your health and safety. We remind every individual that 80% of persons who have the virus experience mild symptoms. As such, it is important that we all remain vigilant and respond promptly to any symptoms of concern to avoid further spread of the virus. The Ministry of Health, we take the opportunity to remind the public to adhere to the infection prevention control measures, ensure that a mask is used always when going out in public, maintain a safe physical distance from others when out as well, wash and sanitize your hands often throughout the day. If experiencing flu-like symptoms, seek medical care immediately at the closest respiratory clinic. We also want to remind the business places to ensure that all of the protocols that are in place to keep your patrons healthy are sustained. That was Dr. Sharon Belmar George. Now, on the regional front, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, is preparing to officially launch two important initiatives to protect the region's tourism sector and safeguard the health and safety of residents and visitors during the pandemic. Dr. Joyce and John, CARFA's executive director, explained that the new tools, which will debut on November 5, 2020, a part and parcel of CARFA's Traveler's Health Program, which provides an early monitoring and response system to public health issues that impact the tourism sector. The Caribbean Traveler's Health Assurance Stamp for Healthier, Safer Tourism is a measurable and verifiable recognition award for tourism entities and destinations that are implementing the recommended proactive COVID-19 health monitoring and safety measures. The Caribbean Traveler's Health Mobile app is a a unique multifaceted health information repository designed for travelers and health and tourism stakeholders. It provides travel health information by each Caribbean destination. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chastney, is currently taking part in the annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the Board of Governors of the World Bank Group. The annual meetings held in October bring together central bankers, ministers of finance and development, private sector executives, representatives from civil society organizations and academics to discuss issues of global concern, including the world economic outlook, poverty eradication, economic development and aid effectiveness. Joining Prime Minister Chastney at the meetings is the Acting Permanent Secretary in the Department of Finance, Esther Rigobert, officials of the Department of Finance and the Department of Economic Development. This year's meetings will be held in a virtual format and feature seminars, regional briefings, 
press conferences, and other events focused on the impact of COVID-19 on the global outlook, the pathway to recovery, and the developments in the international financial system. And meanwhile, a governor's meeting with the managing directors of both the IMF and the World Bank will be held. Prime Minister Shastny will participate in the virtual roundtable. The discussion is on SID's access to finance under the theme of identifying solutions for resilient COVID-19 recovery. It is a critical meeting for small states as they face dire economic fallout from the pandemic. Lisa Joseph has a comprehensive look at the contending issues. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney has long been an advocate for better lending policies to be applied to small island developing states by international financial institutions. As the COVID-19 pandemic takes hold of economies worldwide, small states like St. Lucia are finding it increasingly difficult to avert economic collapse. Prime Minister Chastney describes it as war on two fronts, health and economics. According to the World Bank's semi-annual report titled The Cost of Staying Healthy, the economies of the region are suffering from lower foreign demand, increased economic uncertainty, a collapse of tourism, and the consequences of months under lockdown to try to contain the spread of the disease. With the pandemic expected to continue for an extended period, healthcare systems should consider reforms to improve effectiveness and reduce the cost borne by governments and individuals. In addition, governments will need to find paths back to fiscal consolidation after this necessary period of high spending on economic stimulus and emergency social transfers. Despite this recognition, Caribbean countries who may have been looking toward debt forgiveness as a means of economic relief have been dealt a devastating blow. World Bank Chief Economist for Latin America and the Caribbean, Martin Rama, says countries in the Caribbean should not count on getting any debt relief and should therefore look seriously at other alternatives of effectively managing and growing their economies. Barbados's Prime Minister, Honorable Mia Motley, has been lobbying for debt forgiveness for Caribbean countries that are on the brink due to the pandemic. Barbados's debt-to-GDP ratio had been reduced in June this year to 124.7% from 175%, making the country the fourth most indebted nation behind Japan, Greece, and Sudan. But Rama contends that many of the Caribbean countries are among the richest in the region. They tended not to fall within the low-income bracket, and it tended not to have very high debt as other economies do. So it would be more difficult to make a case for debt forgiveness or debt reduction. Prime Minister Chastney disagrees. That to use per capita GDP, to use debt per GDP is unreasonable because in, in average it's fine, but in absolute terms, meaning if you multiply that ratio by the population, it's an insignificant amount of money. And we've been arguing to use what we call a vulnerability index. And sadly, that vulnerability index was established in 1989 by the Commonwealth Secretariat. So this was really just, uh, I mean, we're certainly not going to take this lying down. Um, but it just tells you in the midst of all of these problems that a statement like that can come out. That we can't take anything for granted. Um, and you would think that the evidence speaks for itself. But to change that global architecture economic architecture is difficult. At the same time, Caribbean countries have been told by the World Bank to contain costs from COVID-19 while awaiting a vaccine. The advice is for countries to spend in the first instance on health programs, on social programs, and on education. A critical step for countries is to reopen schools. Looking longer term, the World Bank says infrastructure is a very important part of a country's growth. You know, the managing director, um, Christalina, came out early and said government should spend as much as they possibly can um, and keep the receipts. Then we're told that um, invest in capital investment projects because getting roads going and getting other construction going helps now augment the social stabilization program. So instead of 
just literally handing persons income support is actually putting them back to work. And so at the end of the day, there's actually some physical in investment into the country as well. So it's a win-win situation. Um, and you have the real situation that globally the world has remained shut down. So we're all, most of the small island developing states of the world are tourism dependent. But the struggle remains building confidence in global travel. St. Lucia's Prime Minister has been relentless in his lobby for pre-testing as a safe route to rebuilding the travel sector. IATA, American, United, all over the world, people are now embracing that idea. And I'm very proud of that. That idea came from St. Lucia, has been embraced by our colleagues in the Caribbean, and we've been out there agitating to make that happen. The efforts are yielding further results, with the UK government last week announcing the establishment of a task force to look at the introduction of testing at Heathrow Airport. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Youth workers attached to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports have presented their quarterly reports. Ryan O'Brien has the details. Youth workers attached to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports delivered their latest reports to the Ministry on Thursday, October 15, 2020, covering the previous quarter of their activities. Director of Youth Mary Wilfred commended the youth workers for their efforts in the field to date and urge them to continue striving for excellence. At every quarter, we do a reporting session so that youth workers can come in to account for the work that they're doing and for us to share best practices, for us to encourage one another, for us to um, learn lessons that um, we don't have to uh, replicate. <laughs> and so this is a, a, a usual meeting um, for, for us in the youth um, department. Also present was Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Caroline Eugene. I am so much looking forward to hearing from you all the good stuff I know that you are doing because constantly I speak with Miss Mary and she always tells me of all the good work that is being done with every one of you around the island. This morning I join you to listen to what you've done. And I'm sure more or less you might highlight some of the challenges that you encounter. Listening to the challenges might put me and the rest of the team in a better position to see how we can alleviate some of the problems that you encounter as you're in the field. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports made a fundamental shift to provide more in-depth focus on youth work in January 2017. Youth work fosters the ability to critically evaluate one's own individual situation in relation to others and society by applying a variety of planned practical measures aimed at ensuring the emotional social, ethical, intellectual, and physical development of young people in a caring and secure environment. So far, 20 youth workers are enrolled in the program. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment through the Department of Human Services has assisted with the construction of a house for an elderly Denry resident, Gilton Joseph. Contractor Collins Lynch volunteered to build the structure. His company, Triple L, provided the materials and labor. Projects like that, we more people need to get involved with because just going around the community have so many people who need that help and I, I understand what is happening and I'm going to do my best. Once I can, I will. Like I say, in the past, I probably do maybe 15 or 20 of these projects in the last 10 years around the valley and then we are ready. So that, I'm hoping I can get the strength and help from God to continue to do this. On behalf of the Ministry of Equity, particularly the Division of Human Services, Elder Care Unit, we would like to say thank you for doing this beautiful project for Mr. Gilton. We're very grateful. We're happy he's comfortable and we have, we're actually saving one older person to be comfortable for the rest of the years. So we appreciate you, we appreciate your guys, your company, and we thank you very much. I would like to say thank you to Mr. Lynch for the great work 
he did because Mr. Joseph was living in a deplorable condition and he came on board, he assisted us and we are thankful for what he did. Culture Minister Senator Fortuna Belrose says the scaled down Creole Heritage Month celebration this year is in keeping with the true spirit of the tradition. As she appealed for adherence to the protocols during the observance, the minister says keeping Juna Creole celebrations within the family unit is consistent with Creole heritage promotion. Details in this report. The pandemic has impacted the way cultures all over the world observe customs that draw mass crowds. Disconcerting yet necessary postponements and cancellations of traditional events are being made to mitigate COVID-19 transmission risks. Fortunately, organizers of Creole Heritage Month here in St. Lucia have found a way to observe the 2020 celebrations in adherence to national protocols by targeting the cornerstone of society, the family unit. Junacoyol La Kainu is this year's event theme, encouraging residents in St. Lucia to celebrate with their relatives. Minister in the Ministry of Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Fortuna Bell Rose, says this approach is not only COVID conscious, but is fundamental to Creole heritage promotion. If you know the history of Junacoyol, when it was initially um, designed and thought of by the Folk Research Centre, the, what the plan was, was always to reach the point where families embrace this, you know, and the true spirit of community came through. And I think what we're seeing this year with the advent of COVID um, and the build-up over the years is a design, you know, to make that happen. So this year, hopefully, we will see um, lots of families gathering um, and participating, um, but keeping it within families. Officials are not opposed to a family from multiple households celebrating together once they observe the protocols. Since the island registered an increase in local cases of COVID-19, the protocols have been reviewed. Mass crowd events have been reduced from 500 to 100 persons. I expect families to invite each other to, to come to their homes, but I think what, we must be mindful of the protocols um, with respect to the COVID. Um, we encourage people to ensure that they have below 100 persons um, in their activities. That is the rule. Um, our police will also be very vigilant on that day, we've been told, in terms of ensuring that there are no mass gatherings um, beyond 100 people. Um, but the focus, like we say, we want you to encourage and to push is that we celebrate within our community, within our families. Um, so it is not unusual for a family to move from Sufre to Viewfort to Denary to go and celebrate with their family, but we want them to keep it within the family and maintain the numbers. Complementing the family-sized Juna Creole celebrations, Creole Heritage Month organizers are now also rolling out a slate of virtual events and activities to promote Creole heritage in St. Lucia. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Creole. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Creole with Primus Hutchinson. Merci, Otto. Jesse. Merci, Madame Department Kenny West Coast Habilité. Pour information à gouvernement cette lucie, GIS, et télévision nationale via NTN, qu'à vous êtes Nouvelle à Creole. Pour vous êtes Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre et ministre des Affaires Finances à cette lucie, Honorable Alain Chasney, pour cette main, qui a participé de la discussion et puis de l'agence de finances de la Terre, ça c'est AMF, ça a pris tous les années, les gros grec banques mondiales aussi, qui a conduit la discussion. La discussion, ça, qui a fait, comme on dit, tous les années, en mois octobre, qui a porté les officiers, grand banque, ministre des Affaires, Finances et Développement, l'exécutif secteur privé, représentatif de la société des organisations civiles et les académiques pour discuter de divers sujets qui ont affecté la terre. En parmi eux, c'est la situation économique de la terre, une manière pour effacer la pauvreté, le développement économique et une meilleure façon pour 
pochuis assistance côté nécessaire Premier ministre a participé à une discussion et puis le directeur général ni IMF et Banque mondiale pour discuter diverses solutions de résilience contre maladie corona. En parmi eux qui présent à grande discussion ça là et puis Premier ministre Chasney, le secrétaire permanent à département finance madame Esther Braffet, les officiers à département finance et département développement économique, grande discussion ça là qu'a fait par communication visiblement à sur internet côté aussi, ça a embrassé le séminaire de discussion régionale, conférence, et puis les journalistes ont parmi l'autre sujet pour discuter de la terre qui a adressé la situation corona et qui là pour essayer de sortir à bas la pèse maladie. Il y a aussi qui a discuté le développement du système financier international. Mercredi le 21 octobre, c'est le site confirmé qu'à Corona 28. Individu à ces jeunes femmes, c'est quatre trois ans de l'âge, sont des gosilés. Ils ont découvert qu'à cela du moins exercice pour trouver des gens qui tiennent contact et puis quatre trois trois, et trois quatre, et trois sept. Par conséquence de ça, ils devaient tester et présentement en quarantaine. Du fait que cette affaire publique a changé qui quatre vingt pour cent des gens qui ont porté signe malade de cela, pas qu'à montrer qui les égouvre. Alors, il est nécessaire pour prendre toute précaution qui est nécessaire. Le ministère de la Santé était aussi une confirmation concernant un cas neuf de maladie de corona, mardi qui passé, et que ça a été porté tout le cas de l'animal 37. Ça, c'est le cas avant le cas de la maladie. Il y a des vidéos assez en l'autre nom, sans nom, car on a trois ans de l'âge, sorti en ville gosile aussi. Il y a un exercice pour trouver des gens qui peuvent tenir contact, et puis c'est les autres cas de corona qui ont trouvé qui ont tenu contact avec 33 et 34. Par conséquence, il y a aussi des vidéos testées placé en bas quarantaine. Le ministère de Santé a fait comprendre en réponse pour Canef Salah. Tout effort qu'a continué et qu'aussi qu'a renforcé ou abattu la maladie et pour s'y manger. Et puis qu'a remercié tout le support que le public a fait en effort salaire. Et puis qu'a demandé le public là pour continuer à faire ce qu'il support salaire. Le ministère de Santé a encore um, profité de l'occasion pour faire le public là changer, pour obéir tous ces protocoles pour empêcher et contrôler la maladie salaire. Toujours servir masse à souffrir d'ail en public, suivre ces marques là qui est en place business pour tenir ses pieds distance là où on achète à bien en place business là. Toujours laver la main avec sanitaire, sous approuver signe qui flouent après attaquer ou aller au petit docteur immédiatement. Y a un grand citoyen de nuit qui s'est couché et dormi et vit plus à l'aise à présent. Ça c'est après y a une compagnie des affaires construction venue porter un secours. M. Gilton Joseph, qui a trouvé des lendes de l'âge, était dans une condition qui était terrible tout le monde. Mais le chef Triple L Constructions Limited, Collins Lynch, et puis le représentatif Edmond Estefan, ensemble avec la famille et l'autre organisation comme SSDF et le département des services des hommes, collaboré pour faire le projet de la succès. Selon M. Lynch, c'est une activité qui est toujours à fait avec déjà bâti en haut 15 ou 20 projets comme ça en ces paroisses là pour ces plusieurs années qui passent. Lynch déclare que c'est un plaisir pour ça accomplir projet comme ça et faire un appel pour l'autre monde qui est capable en cette ci pour suivre même direction et principe qu'on lit. Selon Lynch, l'année plusieurs peuples pays qui qui vivent à l'aise et très confortable pendant à l'autre l'eau pas même ni un logement et ses nécessités qui plus méritent à la vie. Nies, M. Gilton Joseph, Mme Catherine James, qui aussi c'est mon qui a au Chibi, est très appréciable pour avoir assistance à cela. Je suis venu ici à bon matin avec mon ouais, Kaila. Je oui, merci, mon Dieu, je vous mon Dieu, merci pour ça, ça fait, bon, um, yo fait bali, ya. Mr. Lynch, tout ce monde qui travaille, je vous remercie, je vous remercie, mon Dieu, je vous remercie, je vous remercie, je Bon matin, je suis plein de mon ouais, moi rien Kaila, ha fini, mais au terrain dit mais mon ouais, mon amour t'es moi dit quoi, il t'a fini. Bon oui mais c'est un misé mon grand ami, moi pour dire, moi dis bon Dieu, ouvre un clé, t'es bien toutes ces mondes ça qui fait rien qu'il s'est là, bah moi souple papa, bah ouais, on voit si mais bah ouvre un clé, t'es à tous ces mondes ça, bah moi souple pour ton tour. Organisation Nimo présenté M. Gilton Joseph, y a un matelas et un stool, Kaila t'es bâti à deux jours. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trois bonnes nouvelles là. Je vais remercier autant pour regarder et pour vous inviter au prochain. Et puis, je vais encore 
si tu es conservé la vie, tu as présenté une autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, je vais vous présenter Jesse. Merci, Appeal Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming. Goodbye.